Through this Tech Tools for Learner Success series, we have concentrated on making style sheets an actionable part of your documents. Now we take this professional document management effort to the next higher level. We focus on making excellent citations of the information you use. Once upon a time, writers would make their citations based on some fundamental assumptions about the style needed for each publication house. Today, there are 2,000 journal publishers and more publishing articles, opinions, and books. These are found in countries around the world, and each has a specific format required for their publications. Fortunately, the Citation Manager of MS Word makes citation style modifications to the sources you use. Through the years, I have heard people of authority who should know what they are talking about dismiss the Reference Manager in MS Word as being incorrect or messing with their data and simply something not to use. Do it manually. You need to know how to make them right every time, so get on it. Learn how to do it this way. Well, some of the same authorities recommended use of a different program purchased online to add into their MS Word interface. I am frugal and not interested in dropping more money on something to replicate what I already have. Personally, in my younger years, I made citation entries manually when I cited works in my documents, and then when I arranged them into literature-cited summaries. I did it just like the professors told me to do so many years ago when I was impressionable and still lacked confidence and experience with these tasks. Finally, I realized this process took me a ridiculous amount of time to achieve the perfection expected in that part of the effort. More to the motivation to change, I needed to find out how to make it something I could teach my employees as I paid them to assemble their citation summaries. Motivation comes in many flavors. This did it for me. This is when I realized how the citation manager reports in MS Word were not flawed. It was the people who were using it who did not always enter data correctly. In this video, we step through the details you need to give your attention to, and then how to take advantage of this program feature to make your time efficient and powerful. What's this rubbish? <laughs> What's this rubbish, she says. That there is the secret to our success. It's a wrench giving it to you, believe me. But we've decided your needs are greater than ours. George, if you will. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Oh, and Harry, don't forget, when you're done, just give it a tap and say, Mischief managed. Otherwise anyone can read it. As Fred and George said, we solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Take your attention to the References ribbon, where you will recognize the left side controls for the Table of Contents. We have spent some time on that action point to make the Table of Contents, List of Tables, and List of Figures. Moving to the right, see the footnotes and research action areas, but know that in this video series we are not going to spend time with these. The next step to the right is a citations and bibliography label. This will be the action area for this video. First up, there needs to be clarity on the difference between these two terms. A citation is a quotation from or reference to a book, paper, or author in your professional written works. An in-text citation is a brief notation within the text of your paper or presentation which refers the reader to a fuller notation. Whose idea was this? Generally, in-text references are in parentheses showing the author's last name and the year of publication. That provides the necessary details to find the full citation in the literature cited section at the end of your document about that source of information. The definition I just gave you came directly from Sunny Empire State College in California, and I need to cite the source of this information. Now you can see it can be found online at subjectguides.esc.edu. This is what a citation does. It leads the reader to the source of the information you use to build your research on those foundations. These citations form the footing for this video, and we will investigate several embedded styles of citations that MS Word supports. In contrast, 
The bibliography is a list of related articles about the topic you are writing about. You may or may not actually cite each source in context of the assertions you make in your report, but you share these as interesting articles about the topic. Citations are the focus of our discussions in this video. Take your mouse to the References ribbon, Citations and Bibliography panel, and select the Manage Sources icon. An applet opens showing a left and right side panel. As an author, you will build a citation database with each citation you make. This database resides in two locations. First, the left side screen shows the citations I have made while using this desktop computer. I have about 1,000 sources showing here. The second location of citation database information is found on the right side screen. These are the sources associated specifically with the document I have open at this time. If I send this Word file to an associate for editing, then that person has access to all my citation databases as seen on the right side screen. These travel with the document. If these citations are new to that reader, then selecting each source on the right side, clicking the Copy Left button, will move those citations to that reader's citation database. Huh, mischief managed! You might also use this feature if you are changing computers and want to port the basket of citations to your new machine. Simply select all your citations from the left screen, click on the Copy Right button, and these will become associated with the Word file you currently have open. Save that file and transport it to your new machine with MS Word installed. Open the file and reverse these steps to maintain your citation database to be housed where you work. There is another detail about these citation databases you need to know about. I have faced the need to uninstall MS Office from my computers, then reinstall it. I hit a wall in MS Excel when my calculation database grew too large for the 32-bit processing infrastructure to process the calculations I made. I exceeded the system's ability when I eclipsed maximum worksheet size of a million rows by 16,000 columns. I was doing time-changing biometric series analyses of monthly price forecasting through about 16,000 iterations on 2,500 timber stands scattered across about 1,000 page tabs. Oh wow, sure, that was cumbersome. However, the 64-bit processor could pass this limitation easily, by a factor of about 2,000. My machine is capable, but the software was limiting. Needless to say, I needed that 64-bit processing infrastructure, but I was concerned that I would lose all my Word's citation database information when I uninstalled my MS Office. Sure, I was told not to worry, but, well, okay. That is my personal feature. <laughs> I worry. I made the file backups and stored them on a flash drive. I did the uninstall, restart, reinstall to 64-bit versions, then restarted again. When I opened my first document in Word, hey, all my citations were residing just where I left them. Whew. Mischief managed. You know what a citation is how to apply them, and how to make sure you're not plagiarizing written works. We step into a document with about 150 citations. In-text citations alert the reader to an idea from an outside source. We do these as the document is composed. In this manuscript, you make a statement that is not in the realm of common knowledge, but it is particular to the assertions you are making. In this document, I made a reference to some economic data shared by a federal agency. You can keep the pace of your writing by selecting the References ribbon, Citations panel, click on the Insert Citation icon, and select the Add New Placeholder link. You can change the name, but the purpose is to remind you that you need to make your citation right here. Now keep writing and come back to it soon. When you are prepared, you mouse click on the right edge chevron to pull the menu and select Edit Source. You will be prompted to enter all the data for this citation. 
it is just as if you started it from scratch. The other option is to enter the citation as you write the sentence. Leave the cursor at the end of the completed sentence, just before the period. Go to the References ribbon in the Citations and Bibliography panel and click the Insert Citation icon. Then click Add New Source Menu Item. This opens a new Create Source applet. At the top of this applet, find the pull-down, chevron, and look at the options available. There are 17 types of sources for you to identify about the citation you will make. The Holy Grail often hangs on journal articles, but you see books, periodicals, conference proceedings, interviews, newspapers, and the miscellaneous catch-all category at the end of the list. Our current citation is a publication made by the U.S. Forest Service, and that is a report in this context. Select Report. See the bibliography fields for APA is stated below this source type entry. APA shows here because my style selection was for APA on the main controller. If you changed that style to Chicago, then Chicago would be stated here. We will make some changes to the style and see how these are altered. Right side of the applet, see the language pull-down option. Word will assume everything is written in the language used on your computer. I could pull down this menu and select English, United States. If my source was written in Russian or German, then I would pull that option based on the language of the publication I cite. The author is the next entry, and you will enter it as the last name, comma, single space, then first name letter, period, no space, middle name letter, period. This report has only one author, so that establishes this particular reference by name. You see the corporate author radio box and the line for those data. Right now, leave it blank, and the box unselected. We will come back to that when this is used soon. I did not use it on this entry. It has an author named. The title is next, and this comes from the report you are citing, exactly as it was published. Capitalization and punctuation matters. Next line down is the year of publication. Notice the month and day are not requested. Normally, you will have only the year, but we will explore when to enter these other data soon. Next down, enter the publisher of this report. It was published by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Forest Service, from their office in Portland, Oregon. This is the standard minimum data you would enter if your only citation style is APA. But look to the left of this screen applet and find the Show All Bibliography Fields box. Select it and see a new flush of data entry points to consider. Ten new fields were introduced where you can enter the publication department and institution. The report's total number of pages, its type, the day, month, and year you accessed this online document. Enter the URL and the DOI if you can get them. These may not be cited in the APA format, but in MLA or Chicago, you might. A DOI, or Digital Object Identifier, is a string of numbers, letters, and symbols used to permanently identify an article or document and link to it on the web. A DOI will help your reader easily locate a document from your citation. <laughs> Use them if you got them. Enter them now when these data are available to you. When you change the citation style, the information requested will change as well. Enter these data points with the Show All Bibliography Fields button selected. The data you enter will become different when you change the type of source. I find it best to enter everything the first time you make a citation entry. Then, they are available to you every time. Change it now to Journal Article. The fields change because this type of article has different details, like the journal name, city where the journal is published at, who was the editor and publisher. These are unique to journal articles, so you assemble them here in your citation database. Change it back to a report, and then remember to click OK each time you enter new data. Now we make some style changes to see what happens. On the References ribbon, 
In the Citations and Bibliography panel, to the Style pull-down label, click and select Chicago. On this screen, you saw only the comma disappear between the author's name and the year of publication. Now, change the source to MLA. (laughs) The year disappeared. That is the style sheet standard applied to the document you cite. We now take a different look at this citation. Scroll to the bottom of the document to see the literature cited section. We have the MLA style selected in the ribbon panel, so these citations are using that style. Watch the presentation of the data as I change the style to APA. The data are presented differently. In the MLA style, the year was at the end of the citation, but in APA, the year is in parentheses after the author's name. In APA, the author's middle name initial is omitted, but in MLA, it shows. You keep changing that style of the citations and MS Word will make the appropriate changes to each citation you make. Hey, this is super efficient. Back in the document, we scroll down a little to see another entry on page 5, with four authors identified. We could enter this as a new citation, but instead, we see how to modify an entry already made. It is mostly the same as making a new entry. As you hover over a citation, see the gray box outlining it. Click on it, and see the downward pointing chevron on the far right side. Click it. See options for Edit Citation and Edit Source. Select the Edit Source to see the familiar Edit Source applet appear. Because this source has multiple authors, you need to give attention to how these names are correctly entered. You enter the first author last name, comma, then initials with periods. Separate names with a semicolon. Enter the next author last name, comma, then initials. Then type them all in here with semicolons between the names. Microsoft introduced a significant change to the database entries in 2019. Prior to this, the entry process was a bit cumbersome as the first author, was entered as described here, but then subsequent authors were entered after the semicolon as initials, then last name. Fortunately, Microsoft finally figured out how awkward this was and made the change to how they are entered. Now, when I open a citation I documented years ago, I see the original entry that I made, but when I confirm it, The program reorganizes these fields to the current format's clarity. For that, I am thankful. Staying with this citation, look at the use of the ampersign in the author list. That is consistent with the APA style citation. Now change the style to Chicago. Prestman et al. Chicago states that if you have four or more authors that only the first one is named, and the rest are truncated into et al., your literature cited citation is still complete, but for this citation format, this is the standard. I have submitted journal articles that requires use of the APA style, but they say that if there are two or fewer authors, to state the one or both, but if it exceeds two authors, then list only the first author, followed by, et al. I understand the traditional need to save space on those articles. Something about page costs. (laughs) With the vast majority of journals publishing only online journals these days, the page costs are a bit misleading. Nevertheless, we need to figure out how to accommodate this request. It seems obvious to me that the Microsoft folks would create an applet to define the number of authors before the et al. contraction is made. But I cannot seem to find it. The workaround is fast. In the citations list, you will select the downward pointing chevron and select Convert Citation to Static Text. It is made into that static stuff immediately, and you can delete the extra names to leave the et al. ending. The citation is no longer selectable in this instance, but the citation still appears in the literature cited area of the report. This works and you lose nothing, just a few seconds of your effort. So far, 
I have demonstrated only single citation entries, while in fact you will encounter situations where you need to enter two or three to the same statement made. Take a look at the Law of Parsimony, derived from Occam's Razor, and citation of Soklakov. What if I wanted to add a citation by Sipos, Sefer, and Lewandowski? Place the cursor in this citation. On the References ribbon, go into the Citations and Bibliography panel. Click the Insert Citation pull-down icon. Select from the list of sources in the already used citations on this list by Sipos and others. It is added to the citation list for this statement. That looks great, except the Sipos article was published in 2016, while Solokov was published in 2002. Hey, etiquette dictates the most recent published paper should appear first, then the next newest, and the oldest at the end. More than this, publishing houses require it this way as well. This is another instance where Microsoft could have included an auto-sorting feature to make them reorder this way, but alas, we need to manually do that alteration as well. From this citation list, Use the mouse to click on the downward pointing chevron on this citation of two articles. The first option is Remove Citation. Select it, and the citations both appear. You select the one you want removed. In this case, it is the Solokoff article, so select it. It is now removed from the citation. Now go back into this list and add another citation. This time, it is the Solokoff article you add. And this time, it appears at the end of the list, arranged by year of publication, just like you wanted. It took a couple extra steps, but now you have them arranged the way you need them. I suggest making this a final series of citation adjustments before wrapping the manuscript as final. On this same page of the document, there is a citation of work published by Zellner in 1992 as he recognized the danger of overcomplicating analysis rigor. Author's name is given with the date in parentheses. That is a little different from the name year, but it works fine. I made this manual citation format. Making the entry look fine takes another side step, and this one was enabled by Microsoft. In this citation, you will place the cursor after the name Zellner, and with the mouse, insert citation just as you normally would finding the Zellner database entry. It shows the author's name and publication year. Use your mouse to click on the downward pointing chevron of the citation. Select the Edit Citation option. This opens a new applet showing the Edit Citation box. You will suppress the author from the list. That leaves the year of publication to show, in this case, 1992. The title of the document does not normally appear here, but I select the radio box anyway, just to make sure it is suppressed. Although I have found no consistent reason for the article title to appear in the citation text, I have seen it happen where there was no purpose to see it there. I have tried to reason it out having multiple citations by the same author in one document, and the title of the report serving to identify which one was cited but this has not been a consistent situation. Instead of spending time trying to reason out how to make it override always, I have opened those citations to click the title radio box and make the citation right. It is another one of those overrides that is fast and easy, but only if you know that it is possible. <laughs> there you are. Now you know how to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Still on page 20 of this manuscript, we look at the citation by Allen and Fildes in 2002. Here the citation is for a quote from their publication. When we enter their passage, the page numbers of the quote should appear. Make the citation, go to the right corner drop-down chevron and select Edit Citation. We keep the author names in the text of the document but want the year and page numbers to show. Click the box to suppress author. Leave the year unselected. Maybe select the title box to make sure it stays away. Use your cursor to enter page 309, just the numbers. You click OK. 
and the citation appears just the way you needed to see it. Hey, that is golden. Earlier in this video, we saw an entry point to make citation with a corporate author. While it could be entered as the full name of the company who sent this to publication, I have used a different approach for these when it is possible. In a soon-to-come video, we explore how to enter acronyms as part of your document's structure. I was able to introduce and define the Washington Department of Natural Resources acronym, WADNR, so the reader knows what I refer to. I will use this acronym a few times in this manuscript, but soon after the acronym was introduced, I made a citation to the works they publish on the internet. It is an electronic source. In this applet, I check the corporate author and enter the name as WADNR. The rest of the citation is completed based on the style requested. In the literature cited summary, we will investigate soon, the acronym is repeated there as well. When it was defined in the manuscript before it was used in the citation, the mechanics all come together nicely. Click OK, and this citation is firm. I really recommend you spend some time experimenting with these settings for different citations you make. See what is collected when you cite a newspaper article, a website, or a document from a website. Each has some similar components to the ones we've looked at already, and some request specific data for that source of information. Experiment and get some experience. But of course, there is one more super important event to conclude this series with, Literature Cited Summary. In the document we have been working with, we go to page 23. I want this Literature Cited section to appear after a section break, next page. Click the Page Number Settings, Insert Ribbon, Header and Footer Panel, Downward Facing Chevron Page Number, Select Format Page Numbers. In the page numbering applet, select the radio button of Continue from Previous Section. This keeps the page numbers continuous while making a home for the lit cited section. With your cursor on the top of this new page, use the mouse to open the References ribbon, Citations and Bibliography panel, Bibliography Downward Facing Chevron. This shows a busy drop down set for inserting a bibliography. References or Works Cited. For this document, I want to insert a Works Cited summary. Instantly it appears, all alphabetically listed and using the style I selected. I said earlier that I wanted a Literature Cited summary, but it shows Works Cited. <laughs> Not a problem. Change it here, and you have it. This is an active text area and is still controlled by MS Word. If you do some editing in this document and want to make a new citation or remove one, Word will be able to take action on that. But you need to tell it to make the change. On the top of the active text box, see the Update Citations and Bibliography, click on it. At first it looks like you get no response, but look at the lowest right area of the program and see the horizontal line showing calculations. It might take several seconds or longer to verify all the data are entered and in correct form. Here is another head check for you to make. Keep viewing the literature cited we created, and use the horizontal updating bar I just pointed to, but take the mouse to the Citations and Bibliography panel, Style Pulldown, and select a different format like Chicago. You see the changes made, and how very little time it took. With all these settings made, you are seriously set to power through these citations in your written manuscripts. But there is still one more important detail you need to give attention to. Staying in this document, take your mouse to the Citations and Bibliography panel and click the Manage Sources icon. We have been here before, but now I want you looking at this with your newly educated eyes. Look to the right side box. This shows all the citations you have associated with this document. All of these citations appear in the literature cited list we just created. Some have check marks next to them, others do not. Check marks mean the program has record of that particular citation used in your in sentence citation roster. It means you used it. 
If you find one without a check, it means Word has no record of you using it in this document. It could be a citation you wanted to use but decided not to. It is still on the list, so it is also in your literature cited summary. It might be one of those citations you changed to static text. So you could reduce the number of authors from three and follow the first with et al. In that case, you are good to go. You will leave those static text modifications in the list of citations, but you need to remove those citations you did not use. Move them to the left screen if they are new to your citations database, or just delete them from this screen altogether. You need to find each checklist citation and verify its status before you send this document into the wide world as your literature cited summary. It is poor form to publish your literature cited summary with ghost citations you did not make. You know how to manage this mischief. The Citation Manager in MS Word is a solid tool to save you time and energies when publishing your written works. When you know how to manage your time through this feature, you will be able to spend so much more energies doing the things you also need to do. We all face the challenge of scarce resources. Our time is our most limiting resource. This is why I have spent the hours to learn, experiment, and discover new possibilities in this program. And now, I share them with you through this relatively short video series. In the next video, we will loop back to demonstrate how we create formulas in our Word document while also inserting the equation style sheet to their headings. Make that list of formulas as part of the document structure to give it a shine like never before. Oh, and Harry, don't forget, when you're done, just give it a tap and say, Mischief Managed, otherwise anyone can read it.